everybody, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Co. And today I'm going to be showing you a really cool watercolor technique um, called negative painting. And actually you could probably do it with acrylics and oils, but of course I am partial to watercolors. So um, basically negative painting is sort of like glazing on steroids. It's really cool. So I've broken, broken out the sketchbooks to show you some examples before we get to the demo. So let me find it. Okay, so here is an example of negative painting, and this is a painting I did of jellyfish. And basically, if you can see these top um, sort of light blue parts of some of the jellyfish, that was the very first layer I laid down, and then I waited that for dry, uh, waited for that to dry, and then I painted on top of that with this purple layer that is a little bit harder to see on these two jellyfish over here, and then the um, dark blue layer was on top of that. So each time I would leave objects out and um, to, to sort of create them, it's, it's hard to explain. The, this will all become very evident in the demo itself. But um, here's one example. And I really like this technique for sort of outer space themed things or under the sea, um, obviously with the jellyfish. I really like this technique for that. Um, here's another bigger example of negative painting. This one's probably a little bit easier to um, easier to see the layers. So basically it's just, you know, like most watercolor paintings, we work light to dark. We just sort of paint around objects strategically. So I just wanted to break these out so you guys had a little bit of an idea of what our finished product is going to look like. And I will jump right into the demo here. Now um, the reason that this is more of a demo and not a tutorial is because negative painting does take quite a while you have to wait for all the layers to dry. So I'm just working on an arches block today. And I have um, some gemstones here sketched out. And I did a really rough sketch. Feel free to be more careful. You could trace um, if you have a picture of a gemstone, whatever you guys want to do. But I did a really rough sketch here. I do find that it is helpful to sketch out the objects that you want to have. But you don't have to, so it's sort of up to you. Like if you're just working in your sketchbook, maybe don't take the time to do it. But since I'm working on the block today, I thought I would. So um, like I said, the reason this is going to be a demo and not a tutorial, not a step-by-step -step tutorial, is just because I really think it would be kind of boring and long-winded, and I'm hoping this will be more of an inspiration video and less of a sort of step-by-step follow-what-I'm-doing kind of video. So we'll jump right into the painting here. The first thing you're going to want to note about um, negative painting is that you really are in a much better position for a stronger painting if you start really light. Um, I, that's not usually what I do in my paintings. I really, I love to start with dark colors early, but um, trust me when I tell you, you will have a stronger, um, a stronger composed painting if you really start with your lightest lights. And I also really love to use my um, liquid watercolors for this. I love the, um, the vibrancy that they lend. So if you don't have them, don't worry about it. But if you do have them, this is a perfect technique to break them out. For my very first layer, I'm going to, I'm going to make it kind of like a flat wash, but I'm also going to drop in some colors as I go, because like I said, um, the only layer that is the final layer is the very top layer. Most of this is going to get covered up as we go. So don't obsess. This is a good painting to start with if you've like, you know, just started your painting for the day and you want something to kind of loosen up. Negative painting is great for that. And um, all the colors that I use for this painting, I'll have them listed in the video description if you guys want to see them. I'm going to go in and just sort of very gently drop in a little bit of extra color. I don't want to go too crazy. This is still my first layer and too much is going to overwhelm my painting. And now I'm going to wait for this first layer to completely dry before going any further. All right, my first layer is all dry and I'm gonna continue on to the second layer. I like the way those big sort of reddish pink blobs came out, but they are going to be a little bit um, bothersome just because they're already dark. So like I said, the lighter you make your first layer, usually the better. Usually the better. I realize I'm breaking my own rule a little bit there, but just so that you know for your painting. Um, I'm going to make this a four layer negative painting. 
I would say you can probably have a really nice result with anywhere from two to six layers on a negative painting. So you could just do two, you could do six, you could try more than six if you want. But um, like I said, I think the two to six range is a pretty good um, rule of thumb. This next layer I'm going to do in oranges and yellows. And you wanna be careful when you are picking the sequence of your orders that you don't pick opposite colors. Like if I were to make the layer on top of these purple um, and pinks and reds, if I were to make that a green layer, I might get mud because purple, or not purple, but red and green are opposites. All right, so here's where the magic starts to happen. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna decide which objects that I want to keep this light, purpley, pink, red blob layer, this first layer. I think I'm going to leave this, um, the, the sort of diamond in the bottom right corner and the diamond in the upper left corner. I think I'm going to keep them this layer and I'm going to paint over everything else in the painting. Now I'm gonna try my best to keep these lines straight because gemstones are, you know, all cut and, and pretty and ready to roll so they wouldn't have ragged edges. But if I get them a little bit ragged, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It'll help too if your sketch is precise. But if, not, if you're not used to painting precise things, then maybe don't do this with gemstones. Try it with the jellyfish first or the fish like I showed you in my sketchbook examples. I'm basically glazing a whole nother layer on top of what I've already done. I'm only keeping one or two things unpainted. This is why it's called negative painting. You're painting around objects to define them with an additional layer of color. Working fast is of course the best strategy, but if you can't work fast, start out slow. This isn't a big deal. Um, the painting is gonna get darker and darker as we go, and it's going to be pretty easy to cover up mistakes. So do not fret. I will tell you one thing though. Um, if you work on 100% cotton paper, which is what I'm working on today, this will be easier for you. If you are working on thinner, cheaper paper, um, basically your paint's just gonna dry a lot faster. You're not gonna have nearly as much working time for getting these glazes precise. So if that doesn't matter to you, then don't worry about it. But if you find that you're frustrated, that um, your layers keep drying before you've finished, then that is probably your problem. I had quite a time sort of fighting with my cheaper sketchbook paper on that fish painting. So now I've got my second layer all finished. I'm gonna wait for this to dry too. My orange layer is all dry and I'm gonna go into the third layer, which is going to be darker still, and this time I'm gonna use greens. And it's the exact same principle as before. So the objects that you leave out for the first layer, you're gonna to have to paint around the most number of times. So this is pretty much what we've already been doing, guys, you know. Second verse, same as the first here. And we're getting progressively darker. Um, the other thing that can hinder your painting besides starting too dark is also progressing too dark. Like even if your second layer is too dark, then it might be hard for you to get the layering you need to have, you know, four layers. So I think it's a good idea to think out at least roughly how many layers you want this to be before you start. You know, you don't have to think out the whole thing, but I think it might be good just to kind of have an idea in your head of what you want. And I like, um, especially for these geometric shapes, I really like a flat wash brush, but feel free to use a round. I used a round brush for my more under the sea ones. So, but for these gemstones, the flat wash is way easier, much faster too. And like my first layer, I'm going to experiment a little bit with dropping in some pure color. Keep in mind, this is gonna work best on paper that is still wet. In these kinds of paintings, I think 
blooms and sort of hard edges. I think they look cool, but if that's not your thing, then you don't have to do it. It's your painting. Once again, we're gonna wait for that layer to dry completely. Now we're gonna move on to the final layer of our painting here. And I just wanna let you guys in on something. For whatever reason, these paintings, they always look worse before they look better. So really, seriously, like every time I'm like halfway through and I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is awful. But for some reason, you know, just adding that last layer or two, and you know, those little finishing touches, it, it all works out. It's like magically 10 times prettier. So um, don't worry if you have that thought to yourself while you're doing a painting like this. It is just, um, you, re you really gotta follow through, don't stop. <laughs> all right, so for my last layer, I'm going to be doing really dark blues and purples. I usually find that's um, what works best for me. Um, you could also use black. I know some watercolorists, um, usually the more traditionalists, uh, don't like to use black in their paintings and that's fine, but um, it is, you know, the darkest color. So say your layer, your green layer turned out darker than you meant, well, you might need your top layer to be black just to cover it up. So, you know, roll with the punches in that respect. Don't worry too much about what um, what's proper. For this whole painting, I've been working pretty much exclusively with my liquid watercolors, and I really like them for this. But um, like I said, if you don't have them, don't worry about it. You just, you know, spend more time mixing your colors, make sure you've got the right saturation for each layer. It's not a big deal. I just like them because they, they sort of save me time as far as mixing colors goes. They're already vibrant um, and usually pretty concentrated. All right. So it's the last time I'm gonna paint around everything. Now this is the layer you wanna be probably the most careful with is your, your top layer because, you know, it is the top layer. There's nothing that's gonna cover it up. However, I, I will admit that in the past, I've thought a layer was gonna be my top layer and I didn't like it, so I painted over it again. So if that happens to you, that's okay, add another layer. But I, um, I want this to be my top layer because I don't think I can go any darker than these colors. So I'm going to take a lot of care and gently paint around all my objects, the ones I've already blocked out. I'm gonna block out the final objects that I haven't done so far. And this actually almost looks black on my paper here, layering on top of the green. But that's okay with me. You can also feel free to test out your layers first, if this is your first painting and you're feeling a little gun shy. Um, you know, feel free to test them out. See how well they cover each other. Just use a little scrap piece of watercolor paper. And that way you can be sure that you won't um, sacrifice a whole painting if you find out that a layer was either too dark or not dark enough. And um, on this top layer, since I'm working so thick with my colors, there isn't much water here. My paint is drying pretty fast, so I'm probably going to see my brush strokes in the finished um, product. I'm probably going to be able to see the brush strokes on this top layer. Now that, you know, that doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, well, then you're in kind of a pickle because you can only work so fast on this top layer because you're painting around everything this time. Like, you don't really get to paint over anything. You're painting around everything. So... You know, I mean, th there's not too much of a remedy for that other than the darker you work, the less evident they will be. So I would say though, really though, don't worry about that. It's it's so dark and it's, it's not the focal point of the painting anyway. The focal point are these little areas we've worked so hard to preserve. And you can sort of see now how I'm sort of at my darkest possible point. I really can't go any darker. Even if I did a full layer of black, it would still, it still wouldn't cover this too much. This is really dark at this point. And one last time, I'm going to wait for this all to dry and then we'll come back and we will do the very finishing touches, which is, I think, the most fun part. So um, we'll, we'll see it all come together in just a minute here.
All right, everybody, here is the finished painting. Um, off camera, I finished up all my little white outlines and accents, and I added some sort of um, ghostly gold uh, extra gemstones around. And I like the way that that came out. And um, it's kind of a cool painting. It looks a little bit more pop arty than I was going for, but I kind of like it. If you don't like that pop arty look, then I, I would probably leave out the white outlines. I think that that's what made it look that way. But I think it's cool. They kind of look like gemstones. Um, gemstones are like flying through space. So <laughs> that's never a bad thing, right? Outer space and gemstones together can't be a bad thing. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, don't forget to check out any of the links at the end of this video to see more of my work and places you can connect with me um, around the web other than YouTube. And if you decide to try this technique or any of the other techniques on my channel, please, you know, share it on Facebook or Instagram and tag me. I really love to see what you guys come up with. So thank you so much for watching, guys. Um, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And thank you again for watching. I hope you have a lovely day.